Welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Jacob. Hello. Hey, Damon, how are you doing? Uh, could have been better. We have been suffering a bit from uh, neck pains for the last week. But it's getting oh, better. Man. Yeah, I, I get you, man. Like, personally, for me, I, I have a bit of a headache and whatnot, but man, like, it's just. Um. Hits yeah, beating and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, no, no good puns, no good puns. But yeah, uh, in today's episode review, we are going to review the My Little Pony Guardians of Harmony, the MLP annual of 2017. Uh. Why are we doing this now? Well, um, we could have forgotten to review this, or I could have just skipped this altogether. I forgot. This came out in 2017. And yeah, uh, I think past me knew that this wasn't going to be a fun ride. So yeah, oh, man, um, what was the synopsis for this one again? I, I, didn't f- I forgot. Let's see if we can find a synopsis for this one because this one was something else. This one was really something else. Uh, where's this a- annual editions? Yes, two thousand seventeen. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's see. Um, it, the, the My Little Pony Annual 2017 is an annual edition comic released by IDW Publishing. It is a tie-in with the Guardians of Harmony toy line and it features six short stories about the series hero and villain. Uh, copies of the 2017 have been displayed in... Okay, so yeah, man. Um, From that short synopsis there, you can already tell that Oh, this is not gonna be a fun ride. Yeah, and the, the bit line to it is when they said villains because there's only one villain in this story, even though the cover that Andy Price made is showing something completely else. I, you know what? That is true. That, that is a nightmare true. moon on one end, and the nightmare moon doesn't even appear in the story. I know. Oh, God. So, anyway, um, before we officially start, um, Jacob, uh, first impressions. Oh, it's a really mixed bag for me. Like there are some good parts in this, but uh, it's a jumble mess, probably because uh, Christina Rice and Jeremy Woodley are doing this together. So each of them has got like half of the story for themselves. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at that here, and um. They, they mentioned there's what, six short stories? Yeah, sh- six yeah. shorts. And um, Jeremy Whitley and Christina Rice are writing it together. And you got talent from Andy Price, Tony Fleece, Jay Fosgate. And uh, each of them took two. And I, 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 this is one of those scenarios where I don't really like to rag on Jay Fosgate because Jay Fosgate has this cutesy style that uh, not most people like. I'm kind of okay with it, but he got the last two pay- sorry, uh, the last two uh, shorts for the story, and the last two shorts are kind of the climactic um, ending and so on, and having it be in his style is a bit Oh, man. It's off-putting, I can tell. Yeah, that. yeah. It's like, you had... Honestly, like, it would be cooler if you had Andy Price first and Andy Price last. Yeah, I was just wanted, I just wanted to say that Andy Price, the way he, he always treats Chris so with, with, such, with such glamour that it, it just doesn't work the way Foskett portrays it. I know. It's, um, it's a missed opportunity. That's what it is. But okay, um, with, with me and my first impressions, the comic was okay. I'll be honest; it was not my, it was not my um forte. It was it wasn't really my um jam. Like I, I think I remember why I didn't want to review this because it was just advertising, 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 and uh, it it kind of. 
This yeah, is one of those... special after the second when the second half comes. The first yeah. Was... The the first was not that bad because yeah. it was kind of building it up. But if you remember, they could have. I, I think they did sell shadow bolt toys and so on. So it was kind of off putting and oh, man. Like knowing that this is just trying to promote the Guardians of Harmony toy line really put me off. But like they always say, it's non canon, so hey, whatever. <clears throat> anyway, uh, if you guys have not read this comic yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back, welcome back. So we start off the uh, comic with the first chapter Share the Bolts. Uh, okay, in this, well, we start off with. Our hero, Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy, hanging out together and Fluttershy recommending to Rainbow Dash that Tank needs to be around other animals, spending more time, and so on. And at least uh, Fluttershy gets to hang out with Rainbow Dash because uh, usually when they hang out is some kind of world-ending terror and so on. So before Fluttershy even gets to say the line uh applejack barge in saying emergency there's a bunch of changing coming back and she's attacking the crystal empire and with that rainbow dash gets ready to zoom off and save the day or at least go back to count a lot to group up with the others and she tells Fluttershy if she, no, she asks Fluttershy if she can take care of Tank for her, and Fluttershy, being the nice person, says, "Yeah, sure, no problem." So Rainbow Dash dashes through the forest and heads to Cantalot, but seems to be flanked by two mysterious inky uh, substance that suddenly change into shadow bolts. And a bit of continuity here, which is kind of cool, where um, she says that you guys are not real, you guys are just an illusion created by Nightmare Moon and so on. And the Shadow Ball says, oh yeah, if we're fake, how could we do this to you? And they spit off and tries to wreak havoc in Ponyville. So now... Rainbow Dash has a dilemma. Does she head to Cantalot to join the Wonder Balls or stay back home and fend off the Shadow Balls from causing trouble in Ponyville? And she begrudgingly says, I'll stay in Ponyville to deal with the Shadow Balls. Yeah, there really was no easy way out of this one. Technically, yeah. And... We see Rainbow Dash meeting up with the Shadow Bolt. So, long story short, the Shadow Bolt makes a deal with Rainbow Dash, saying that uh, let's race. If we win, you join us, and Rainbow Dash wins, they'll stop doing whatever they're doing. So, they agree to the terms, and they race. Uh, Shadow Bolt's cheating by dashing ahead, and not giving Rainbow a start, but that doesn't really matter because Rainbow dashes fast and she dashes true. But the Shadow Bolts play rough and start hitting her and whatnot. So Rainbow Dash plays this to sorry, Rainbow Dash uses this to her advantage and breaks at the last moment to well let the two of them um, bang into each other and run into a tree. Suddenly, we discover that, oh no, the Shadow Bolts are not real, they are changelings. And they say that we're just a distraction for you to waste your time with us because Queen Chrysalis has, um, what you call this, Queen Chrysalis has uh, enacted her plan, blah, 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 and whatnot. And Rainbow Dash here says, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I am fast and I can just um, go there really, really fast. Bye-bye. And with that, episode ends or issue ends or short ends. Yeah. So, um, Jacob, what do you think, man? Like, 
what do you think of this setup and so on? I mean, the setup is good. It's building up to the the next chapter, right? With yeah, the next chapter because the at the start of the this part, it's basically stated that uh, you missed that one. Uh, Remy Dash is supposed to keep uh, Pinky busy while Choose Sandwich plans the party for. Uh, yeah, I forgot Mr. about mentioning that one. Yes. Next one. Yeah, I, I forgot to mention about that one. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of slipped my mind. <laughs> but yeah. Um. But overall, like the changeling appearing. Ah oh, man, that's not true about what they mentioned. Many foes, many enemies. There's only one, and that's just Queen Chrysalis. Yeah. They just wanted to do the toy line. Like, there's this one awesome figure of um, Nightmare Moon that's really good. What do you call the thing uh, in the comics when the cover shows something, but the contents are something completely different? Um, oh, man, I forgot what it's really called. Like... Not red herring. Uh, false advertising. Catfish. Yeah, false advertising. Oh, catfish. <laughs> yeah, but still, um, the intro does set up a lot, of, a lot of things. Um, we get to know that the changelings are back and they're here to cause trouble. But anywho, let's move on to the next one. And the next chapter is is a Pinkie Pie, right? Yeah. All right. So next chapter is Pinkie Pie. Oh man, I need to open that first page because that first page kind of really helps with the artist and so on. It starts off with Twilight in the cheese sandwich. Mm, sorry. Uh, yes, a story by Christina Rice, art by Tony Fleece. Tony Fleece's art is awesome. Like I, I like his art. I like his art. I, I do have one small nitpick. It's a personal peeve, uh, but. Whenever he draws characters from a distance and he just draws the eyes like it's only colored, but there's no it's not there's no black inside, so it's little, it looks like a psychopath or something. <laughs> uh it's okay. Uh but still it's one of those artistic styles, I guess. But anywho, uh we start off the um with short two with Twilight and Cheese Sandwich of all ponies in the middle of town. Uh Twilight thanking Cheese um, that he was able to come in short notice to to start a party or to to get a party ready for uh, Pinkie Pie since it's her what was it again um it's not birthday they didn't really call it birthday um no, birthversary yes birthversary party wow <laughs> so anywho um. They say that um, Pinky won't be around town for a bit because she'll be distracted with Rainbow Dash. But we all know what happened to Rainbow Dash. So, yeah, Twilight leaves Cheese to his work. And what do you know? Next panel later, we see Pinkie Pie barging into Cheese. Uh, Cheese panics a bit because, oh no, I thought Rainbow Dash was supposed to keep you distracted. Why did you, why are you here and so on. So we, we get a whole skit here where Cheese is trying to lie to Pinky about, oh no, um, uh, this is for Sweetie Drops. Uh, Sweetie Drops, two Sweetie Drops, oh no, no, no. Um, uh, yes, Bon Bon, yes, Bon Bon. So yes, this is a party for her. Lyra asked me to help her plan a party for her and so on. And you get to see the interaction of them, like, okay, um, Pinky just, just over his uh, gear that he brought. Yeah, like, fawning over the, the the tank, like, wow, the party tank, like, yeah. So while she's distracted, Changeling kidnapped Cheese, and one of the Changelings transformed into Cheese and kind of push her down, being a really big meanie and stuff. But I don't know what to say about this because um, on the same panel, we see that there's two cheeses and she just asks, um, how can you be over there while you're over? Oh no, it's changeling. So um, Pinky hops onto the party tank and blasts the cheese sandwich changeling 
and saves cheese with the party tank with really precise aim. Yay, she's awesome. So this one is just a lot of fun in terms of it's just action on action. Uh, cheese gets in his tank and blasts a lot of rubber chickens while Pinky used her party cannon to blast changelings too and in the end the changelings retreat and yay uh, the two kind of talk to each other uh, kind of say wow you, you're great and whatnot and they both kind of say uh, would, sorry um, she's asked if her, Pinky wants to um, set up her own party and whatnot so yeah that's kind of fun and comic ends yeah so yeah, cool. what, what do you think? <laughs> I bet Malcolm ba Michael Bay is really jealous over that tank and cannon sequence. Explosions everywhere! Yeah, boy, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, uh, I, I, I don't know about this one, man. Like, th this one is just pure action, but, oh man, substance is really, really low. Yeah. There's no, no way around that. Yeah, like they're just setting up the party tank because they're trying to sell a toy. Like, I'm so jaded on this one. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't get as bad as it gets later on. This one's still no. passable. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, next story is Shining Armor, uh, written by Jeremy Whitley, art by Tony Fleece, again. So we see the Crystal Empire is being attacked by changelings. Uh, we see that there's Pegasi guards in the Crystal Empire, so that's cool. And we see the dilemma going on because Shining Armor feels like he's doing nothing and he's useless. And Cadence says, Dear, don't go head first into battle because... Uh, you could be kidnapped and swapped by a changeling and I wouldn't know and so on, blah, blah, blah. So, Shining Armor just says, uh, okay, dear, I'll just stay at home and uh, try to do, be useful and ponders to himself, what would Twilight do? And he comes to the conclusion, research, yes, I shall do research. That is what Twilight will do. So, he goes to the library, looks through a few books and he got no idea how Twilight does this whole thing. And lo and behold, he gets lucky and finds a book with the title Amore, the First Crystal Princess. Uh, in said book, uh, let's see, there's a story about her, how she has a lot of... Uh, she, she defeats... Uh, I'm just going to read the whole passage, like, if I can. Uh, princess Amore was the first princess of the Crystal Empire and frequently had to lead the Crystal Ponies to beat back monsters on all sides. As a result, she was forced to create a number of spells and magical relics to aid her pony's defense. Uh, the best known is the Crystal Heart, a magic so powerful it pushes most creatures beyond the borders of it. Uh, sorry, beyond the borders of the empire, but deep in the crystal cavern under the city, Amor, Amore stores a number of magical too dangerous to be left in the open. She sealed them away just in case the, Chris, uh, the empire should need to be defended again, protected by the magic creature and spells that lurk in the cavern. So with that, Shining Armor decides to go down the crazy stairs and tries to open the door to caves yes so while in there he tries to look for the lab that princess amori has so while looking through he he hears some scratches and scrapes and whatnot and he sorry he discovers fluttershy out of all creatures. So he asks how did you get here and whatnot and it's kind of dangerous being in here alone. Um let's get you out of here and whatnot. 
and there's some kind of buzzing sound kind of a danger and so on and it's the changelings they have penetrated to the caves oh no and Fluttershy here says um uh, go uh go go on without me like i'm just one silly pony i'm not important uh, you should go save the kingdom and whatnot and shining just says it doesn't matter saving one pony is important as saving all of them and with that suddenly the buzz is gone and Fluttershy is missing and we see why and that's because there's this huge glass mirror that is kind of an enchantment that was cast before and it was a test to see if shining armor was worthy to sort her powers and she says a true ruler one worthy of the power within knows that life of every pony is precious if you had left your friend to search the hidden chamber you have you have never found it and so on blah and with that the enchantment blasts a hole in the wall to reveal the lab and yay so jacob um what do you think from um what, what do you think of it from this point personally this is my favorite of the six chapters so far it's actually oh yeah that's how from, from the beginning. Uh, the one where uh, Ken tells his husband that he should just don't do anything. You just get into trouble. And the first thing that comes to my mind is... Uh, have you ever watched that uh, Rudolph the Red Nose uh, Reindeer uh, stop motion? No. Yeah, I, I thought of it, yeah. The, right Kenzie, Kenzie is basically saying, this is Mare's work. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, yeah. Uh -huh. It feels that way. It, it really feels that way. Like, oh man. It, it feels like, honey, you shouldn't be doing this. You should just go play your Dungeons and Dragons or Ogres and Ogliets and let the adults do the work. Like, oh god. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh huh. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, anywho, um, continuing on. Right. Uh, we see. Um, sorry? Hold on. Uh, I think I have a few more. Um, hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's a good that we got Princess Amora back because besides uh, in the Sombra's uh, backstory, we didn't see her anywhere else. So it's actually a welcome surprise to see her again. I, I, I don't know what oh, to say, man. Like, like one page explaining what, uh, what she was doing and all that. But other than that, I, I think it's okay. But I do have uh, to question um, Jay Paskett's... Uh, uh, art on the the page on the page after that one, then uh, Shining Gumbo gets into the Crystal Caverns, and his body proportion makes him look like he's a little kid. Yeah, oh, man, the Force Git, like uh, we, we'll talk about that one later. We'll talk about that one later. But yeah, oh man, like honestly, you you, you enjoy seeing Amori. I felt like ah, uh, when she appeared, it was like. Yeah, this is not canon. Like, oh yeah, I I shouldn't really be too yeah. stressful or too stressed over it. It's just that I, there's so much potential. Like, it 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 just. I I recently had a conversation with um another Patreon member talking about um B tier canon versus non canon stuff, and. This here is a really good example of B tier canon slash non canon because what the creators are doing here is just creating a non canon scenario just to promote the toys. And I, I feel like doing so really hurts the characters, kind of hurts the I won't say brand because that's what they're trying to do, but it hurts the integrity of the characters. Uh, well, well, what's wrong? I'm, I I don't think I follow. It's just that okay. The annual itself feels like 
advertising. Yeah. Like, with, uh, okay, uh, with, with, how do you put this? With the Nightmare Rarity arc, even though it's not canon, you can still feel like, oh, uh, this is just an alternate universe, a U kind of scenario. Or with the um, Mirror arc, where Celestia falls in love with a different version of Sombra, you can just say it's an AU story, alternate universe, and so on. So, with those, it kind of feels like, okay, there's something here. There's there's something here that is that has value. But with the annual, it feels like I'm trying to sell toys. You know what I mean? You get what I mean? Yeah, but uh, I'm not sure. I don't follow how this has anything, anything to do with Princess Amor's image appearing. I mean, it's said that she's not really her. It's, 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 how do you put this? Um, Princess Amore is one of those characters that is kind of iffy in the fandom where she's there just because she was part of the... Um, Sombra book arc, book arc and whatever related to it and having her here yeah, it feels like okay they're just using whatever assets they can and eh, I, I don't know like maybe, maybe it's just me overthinking it and I shouldn't really go beyond that but it feels like ah oh, man could uh, be me doesn't feel it doesn't feel like that for me. I mean, I I know that this that this is and even after knowing that this is basically just promoting the new toy line, it doesn't doesn't feel like off putting. It's just an enchantment uh, set up to guard uh, what the hell it's. Oh yeah, I, I that I do agree. It's just that, so, like, I I don't know. It could be me. It it could just be me. Um, overthinking about okay. Uh, uh, Princess Amori, you could have done a lot of things, and then like, why is the lab destroyed? I mean, ah, uh, it, it it just it just raises so many questions for me. I mean, it's been a thousand years. <laughs> two thousand probably. What? Two thousand. Oh no. yeah, he, yeah, yeah. It is two thousand yeah. years. Uh, in that case, I think there's a bit of a, a chronological error here. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh my goodness. But anywho, anywho, um let's oh, put that aside. Let's put it hmm? the last part. Uh Shining Arrow finds the only thing that isn't broken is uh vile with whatever this dragon blood or whatever. And the, mm. the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, from the nightmare before Christmas. But what does it mean? <laughs> Oh man. So anyway, um, yeah, like you mentioned before, in yeah. cave, the uh, shining armor discovers the lab, and it's all busted and whatnot except for one bottle, and said bottle, or test tube, has an image of a dragon. And what does it mean? <laughs> so that ends the story here. Yeah. Uh, we move on to the, uh, fort, uh, short. And yeah. for short, it's called Twilight Sparkle, written by Jeremy Whitley and art by Andy Price. Yeah, this so, is where the problems become real noticeable with the advertisement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anywho, we see changelings attacking the pony villains. Oh, yay. We see that uh, Big Mac and a bunch of his friends are fending off the changelings and we see Bonbon bon spotting Lyra and heading to her and asking her to join in to stop the changeling army and whatnot. And Lyra here gets mad and calls Bonbon stupid names and hurts her feelings. <laughs> but before anything could go beyond that, uh, we see another, another Lyra with Princess Twilight uh, chucking a Lyra or harp towards the imposter. And it is a changeling. Oh no. Go and... action harp. <laughs> Yay, action harp. 
Uh, I, I just love the explanation. You have an action harp. Nah, it's just a normal harp, but I just swing it really, really hard. <laughs> uh, so, yay, the two of them um, walk together with Princess Twilight. And Lyra mentions, or Lyra points out to Twilight that her butt is vibrating. So, they head to... Oh, no, don't, don't do that like that. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I shall do it like that. <laughs> Because it's much more fun. You are not silver. Don't do this. <laughs> I know. Uh, we need his snark. But anywho, we head to the castle. And Spike tells Twilight that, yo, the castle is... The, the map is calling for you. And it's asking you to be in the castle. Um, She's already here and decides that, okay, um... Maybe she the castle wants me to hit to the top of the castle. I, I don't know. So everybody heads to the top where there was a door. And the door has this inscription that says, When the enemy of friendship disguise their intent, friendship's, uh, sorry, friendship's princess must become its champion. To claim the armor of friendship, the Princess must approach the door with two friends who relationship has been tested by great I'm sorry by the greatest of challengers. A bit on the nose there, but still uh we see Lyra and Bonbon hit up and says, Oh, uh that's a cool door, how do you open it? Um somehow they're already there and it's open. And they discover something you don't really know what this thing looks like. Yeah. They discover something. <laughs> and um, Spike just reads the armor of friendship. Okay. I mean, you can only see that it's an armor from, uh, box, from the, the bottom panel. But the rest, you can make heads, of and heads and tails from this. Yep. Because, uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to read through because it doesn't really matter. So, hey, uh, It says here, when the princess of friendship wears the armor, she shall see the truth and capture the liars. And there's one more thing. Um, uh, Twilight doubts herself, but there's one more thing on the plaque that says, you can do it, it says. Uh, sorry, you can do it, Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> That's a little bit on the nose. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, okay, so Twilight armors herself up with this armor. And we see that she's flying around, catching her enemies in what looks like to be a... A snowplow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. So, anyhow. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, also, I knew it. I knew and the price was a changeling all along. I just knew oh, it. No, oh no. Uh, but, anywho, um, uh, shorts and what, what do you think, man? <laughs> yeah, this is where it really starts going down. <laughs> yeah, pff, yeah, this man. becomes so blatant. Oh, yeah, but you uh, when I said that Andy Price was a changeling. Mm -hmm. that that's his pony over there. The oh, one yep, yep. the pencil with the uh, bad wings. Yep, yep. Uh, okay. Andy Price and, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, Katie Cook's... Yeah, Katie Cook's pony too. The one with the red mane and the uh, Phoenix logo. Yeah. Yeah, that that's her too, and Andy Price likes to do the pony ice cream person thingy. I forgot the name. Uh, I don't think I recall that one. But I just remembered the the pony in the trench coat. Uh, oh, that 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 was there too. Um, but usually, uh, what Andy Price likes to do is draw that pony, uh, the green pony with the ice cream cutie mark, and he he just likes to put it with Big Mac. Like just he just likes to do that, the crazy man. <laughs> yeah, I must have missed them. <laughs> but anywho, uh, let's head to the next short, and next short is Wonderbolts. 
So, uh, Princess Celestia calls in uh, Spitfire and Sorin, uh, or Princess Celestia and Princess Luna, saying that the Crystal Empire is being attacked by Changeling and they need uh, their support to... Uh, they need the support, like the Crystal Emperor needs the support. The Space Fire says, yay, no problem, we can go there. And Sorin points out to Spitfire that um, how are we going to go there? Because the Crystal Empire is way up north and it might take us a few days to hit there. So Spitfire says she has a plan and you go gather the Wonder Balls. So we see or we join with Spitfire as she heads to her office and grabs some kind of prototype experimental thingy. Uh, we see that uh, Sorin recruits Fitfoot, Fire Streak, um, who now uh, Fitfoot's Fire Streak, um, and some other ponies, including Surprise. <laughs> oh Jesus! What a name! I know, but that's also G one pony. So yeah, <laughs> and what? they head to Ponyville and ask where Rainbow Dash is. And Fluttershy just says she went to Cantalot a long time ago, and the Wonderbolt got no idea where she could be. So no problem, because um. One less pony is okay, no problem, no problem. So yes, the sorry, um Spitfire hands out some prototype experimental Sonic gliders. Yeah a lack for a better word, Sonic gliders. Is that it? Is that is that the proper name? Yeah. yeah. So, so, sonic Sonic uh, Supersonic Speed oh. Yeah, Sonic Gliders, yes, okay. Prototype Sonic Gliders, yes. So um it's basically a surf. I mean, it's not a surfboard. It's like a skateboard without wheels with wings, and it's super fast. And it gets them to the Crystal Empire really, really fast. And with that, the Wonder Bolts deal a lot of damage to the Changeling and protect the Crystal Empire. Yay! So, uh, what do you think, man, about this one? Yeah, this is where we start sharing the... When there's two writers and things start to look disconnected with what's shown in one place and there's something shown in the other. Like, uh, in the first page it says uh, Crystal em the Crystal Empire, on the other hand, uh, is in desperate need. They have no air support. And yet, uh, two, two chapters... Wait. Yeah, two chapters back, we were shown that they have Pegasi in the air. But with, with that, I'm just going to say that it's forgivable because um, the guards that we see there could be just uh, borrowed guards from Celestia's court of Celestia's army and whatnot. So they're just there just for show, just, just a few, uh, probably a few that were on tour there, probably. And most of their guards, or the local guards, are just crystal ponies. So they don't have much flyers. So it's forgivable in that sense. But I do get what you mean. Yeah. And then <laughs> the shameless toys. Uh... It's, it's, it's one of those things where she even yeah, says that. <laughs> but then Spitfire says they've never been tested and they might blow up. Yes, this is what I point out. Like, <laughs> they're going to blow up before they get to the Crystal Empire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know it's just for action movie fun and whatnot, but at the same time, too, it's... This is where... the This is the short that lost me. This is the short that really made me say, I'm not interested in buying the toys. I'm not, I'm not interested. Like, you're losing me. You're, you're losing me. And at the same time, too, J. Foss gets art in terms of action fighting. Ah, I really hate to say this, but it doesn't work for me. 
yeah. Like he his art is adorable when it comes to slice of life comics or slice of life stories, but when it comes to action, it's really not working for me. Yeah, I get it. Oh boy! So anywho, one one last uh, one last hurrah. And it's Big Spike, written by Christina Rice and art by Jay Foskett. And you can tell where I just left my 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 mind left my body's and my body's just left behind. Oh boys! So anywho, we start off the adventure with the main six gathering in town. Uh, I got no idea why Rainbow Dash is here, but. We see that she's here, and Twilight has her super armor on. Well, Rarely. at least you can give uh, Jay Foskett's props on this one. At least this looks like an actual armor, not that thing that Andy Price had to draw. But that's a, that, but that's the thing, because how does the armor look? You know what? I am going to Google it, and uh, and I'm gonna check it out. See. All right. Harmony toys. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh my god, that is not clear. No wonder. No wonder both of them got no idea how it. Oh, god. Yes. No. Um. Andy Price got it right. Yeah, Andy Price got it right. And it's it's just that the armor itself. <laughs> I look at it. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just seeing a few shots here, and um, what, what it, okay, uh, let me let me compose my words. What it is supposed to be is that the armor can flip in front to become a capturing device, and what J. Fosgate did was not what the toy line looks like. So it's. Ah, what J Force did was much better than what the toy line is, but what? Oh my! Oh, I'm coming apart! Oh my god, I'm coming apart! It's 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 like Andy Price's art is awesome, but that armor there looks terrible, and it's it and it's toy cannon, like it looks like the toy. <laughs> It's one of those things where it's not his fault. <laughs> okay. I am speechless. Okay. <clears throat> okay, okay, okay. Let's let's just drop this whatever it is and continue on. Okay, so Rarity is in love with the armor and asks her where she got it. Twilight just says she'll explain it later. And they got a dragon mail from Princess Celestia. Uh, Princess Celestia says Queen Chrysalis and a swarm of changelings have been spotted heading towards Ponyville. So whatever they were doing in the Crystal Empire seems to be a diversion because her real attack is Ponyville. Okay. I mean, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, why was that necessary? <laughs> it, it, okay, I I can understand because Princess sorry, um Queen Chrysalis has a huge grudge on Princess Twilight slash Starlight Glimmer. So attacking Ponyville makes sense, but wouldn't it make much more tactical sense if they? Slowly invade the invade Ponyville like what they did in the first issue of the comics. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, the logic's coming up. No, uh, it left a long time ago. That's my bad. I mean, it's <laughs> it's just that. The technician in me says, like, that was much better planned than what you did here. God damn it. 
I mean, okay, maybe she just wants to burn the place, yeah? Like, she, she, she hates the place, she hates Twilight, and she hates Twilight Glimmer, and just wants to burn the place to make a point. Okay, let's, let's go with that. Oh, God. So, um, they, they get the news, and they say, okay, um, how, how do we do this? How, how do we protect Ponyville? Um, do, do we have enough manpower to protect Ponyville? Suddenly, we see the word Twily on screen, and in the next panel, we see Shining Armor! Awesome! Oh, how, how is that possible? No, that man, like, okay. Meanwhile, uh, the one that wants to take some stupid contraption to get there. But here's the thing, here's the thing, okay. Maybe he took the train, he, he took the bullet train, he took the express train, right? Like, it makes sense because he is the prince of um, the Crystal Empire, so he has power to do that, yes. So, um, but here, it says here, I ran here from Crystal Empire, so it's implying that he didn't really take the train. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> yes, I'm serious. Hold on. What? I'm uh, God dang it. Oh, God. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. So, Twilight asks, Shining Armor, what are you doing here? When what happened to you? When I realized Crystal, the Queen, when when we realized Chrysalis was planning her attack on Ponyville, I ran here from the Crystal Empire. It was the only... <laughs> oh. oh, Jesus. <sighs> God damn it, God damn it. And by this point, I drop everything. I, I drop all sense of logic and whatnot. I, God, God damn it. <laughs> it's, it's not even, it's not even, okay. It would have been interesting if they worded like, oh, when I realized Chrysalis, uh, when we realized uh, Chrysalis was planning her attack on Ponyville, uh, I came here as fast as possible from the Crystal Empire. Uh, implying that you took uh, public transport and then teleported your way and then ran there. That could that could work, right? Yeah, but Shining Gabbard doesn't have the power to teleport. But that's the thing, like, he forces himself to do it, so that's why he's a bit knackered right now. Yeah. So it makes sense in that way. So it doesn't... So, so it's yeah. forgivable that he looks that tired and so on, but... Oh. <sighs> We just don't get that information. Or we just got the wrong information. Oh, God. So, anywho... <laughs> uh, Shining Armor produce a beaker. A beaker this time, by the way. No, um, what was it again? No, oh. uh, originally it was a beaker. And then now it was a bottle. In the previous chapter, it was a vowel, and now it's a ball. Yep, yep. I... <laughs> Again, this is the disconnect between two writers and artists. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's, it's forgivable, it's forgivable. Maybe they didn't really get the memo memo straight, like vial beaker, bottle, and so on. So they didn't really get that straight so one person interpretation blah 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 okay uh pff, whatever so shining armor shows the bottle to the crew and he says that it came from the catacombs from of the crystal empire but he doesn't know what it is spike here sees that wow it's a dragon and Twilight just says, oh, this is ancient magic. It could be very dangerous. I'm not sure if we should use it. Which I'm with Twilight on this one. Because we got no idea what it does. But the action yeah. person in me says, just do it because it's content. <sighs> so, Twilight, 
uh, after getting, I won't say peer pressure, but after getting coerced by her friends and family, says that, okay, um, this is the only way for us to defend Ponyville, so I'm, I'm going to try. I'm, go- I'm going to try it a little. So she takes a sip of the potion and somehow gets really powerful and zaps everyone with armor. And yeah, um, all the ponies get the power except for the dragon. Okay. So, uh, just in the nick of time, the changeling attacks the ponies. <coughs> and um, Spike goes up to Twilight and says, Twilight, you need to put that spell on me too. And Spike just, sorry, Twilight just says, um, what are you doing here? And no way, it's too dangerous for a little dragon like you. And I have to note that Twi- Spike doesn't have his wings, so he is considered a baby still. Yeah. So, the ponies arm themselves and defend Ponyville. Uh, we see Chrysalis in J. Fawcett style. And I... Okay. <laughs> no fanfare whatever. Yep. So, we see them fighting and so on. And Twilight gets beaten down. Oh, no. Uh, we, we do see Shining Armor and Rarity blasting the changelings out of the sky. Uh, Pinkie Pie is helping with her party cannon. Rainbow Dash is fighting too, so it was awesome. Um, Spike hits to Twilight and says, uh, you need to bless me with that power because trust me, uh, I know what it is and so on. And Twilight just says, I'm losing, so does it really matter? All right, let's do it. So she takes a swig of the potion and zaps Spike with the power, upgrading Spike into a big dragon, like how he appeared in... um, What was that episode again? I forgot. My excess. Yes. So, yay, we, we get that. And the changelings are defeated by big giant Spike with Shining Armor riding on him and burning all the Changelings away as the Changeling ran away and Ponyville is saved thanks to Spike coming in and (sighs) it's one of those things where how do I put this it's one of those things where the Ending is kind of cool because, yay, the baby dragon, the one that nobody listens, saves the day. Awesomeness. But the journey there was just, oh, God. Yeah. By the way, to promote a toy. Oh, God. Yeah, this is the only, the big one. Mm-hmm. Bye. So, Jakob, what do you think of this one? I think this was probably the worst one of the bunch. I get the, you know, yeah, the ending's good, but uh, just after everything we've gone through, it just doesn't... Uh, I just can't master the worst to say it. And, and here's, here's the thing I'm noticing. Christina Rice just took two writing roles in this one while Jeremy really took the rest. So, yeah. like, that that ending there was a bit disjointed and whatnot. Like, I... I how to put this? Uh, it feels like Jeremy Whitley has should have just took the last story and crafted it in a way that could work. I mean, it's... How to put this? There's the the ending was a bit off in terms of writing yeah. and in terms of art. Like if the art was Andy Price and the writing was Jeremy Whitley, we have that we, we would have that smooth how do I put this? Um smooth transition towards the story. Uh probably Christina Rice would have done okay with the Shining Armor story or even with the Twilight story, probably. But what we got here was a jumbled mess. 
Yeah. Personally, I think Jared Lewis should have just done the whole thing by himself. Probably, yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. But we got no idea why they did it this way unless there's interviews that I haven't read and so on, but whatever. So, honestly speaking, yeah, I do agree with you. Um, They should have done it that way because if they did it that way, uh, the story would have been more co- coherent. Or coherent. Wait, coherent or cohesive? Uh, coherent? Cohesive? I'm not sure. But uh, it's that word. Pick one. So, yeah. Overall, the comic itself is just mm. okay. It's just okay. It's nothing to rave about. It's just something that is it's there. It's It's nothing else. Yeah, I mean, it exists. It exists. Yeah. The the worst part of it is that it's just there to sell toys. And you know what? I I can understand why Hasbro wants it that way because they had a bunch of toy lines that they wanted to push. Um, the TV series didn't have space for it. So let's do it in the comics because... The comics have a lot of pull. And yeah, let's do it in the annual. And yeah, ain't great. Ain't great. Yeah. Oh, boys. But I do enjoy the mix. Um, Mix, what you call this? Mix art style from multiple artists for each story. It gives it that... Um, certain feel, certain style kind of thing. But since this is, this is an overarching story, it feels a bit all over the place. It, it the, the idea and plan doesn't fit. Like, the annual, usually from what I remember, are a bunch of comics that has a team. A team going behind it like um let's see give give me a second like the the first annual the 2013 one is about um sunset shimmer in equestria and how she doesn't like princess celestia and so on and escapes to the human world then we get to see the rain booms uh getting to know each other and so on and so on, so on, so on. And then the 2014 annual was about the Power Ponies, the real version. Well, not really the real version, but the Power Ponies. So we get to see that. And that was an overarching story. Um, With this one, the 2017, it's just all over the place. It, it was trying to tell shorts where technically it didn't really need to. Yes. I think it would uh, improve it somewhat if different tactics were in some different places. Like if Jay Foskett was like on the first chapter, maybe the second one wouldn't have been so bad. Yeah. So and... the, the last one wouldn't have been so bad. Yeah. And I, I think uh, I get why most of the stories in the 2017 annual was not great. It was just because uh, they were focusing on so many things and it was written by so many writers. Not so many, but two writers that felt like they didn't really communicate with each other on what to do. Because the Power Pony annual, the 2014 annual, was written by Ted Anderson. Um, the two thousand uh, for two thousand thirteen annual. Um, that one I'm not hundred percent sure. I need to double check on that one. <clears throat> Sorry, thirteen was written by written by Katie Cook and Ted Anderson, but that one there was pretty interesting. Um, Katie Cook just took the first eight pages of the. Uh, comics 
And I think that was the Andy Price art one where she, yeah, where, where uh, it was about Sunset Shimmer and so on. Yeah. And the rest was just written and uh, written by to, uh, Ted Anderson and drawn by Tony Fleece. So it wasn't that bad. Like it, it had focus. So the the problem with the seventeen was it tried it tried a lot of I it tried a lot and it dropped the ball. So not saying that the idea was bad. Could be the execution didn't pan out. Yeah, that was probably just fault in this. Hmm. Uh, well, sorry. Um, I I've been talking a lot about this one. Um, anything more to add, man? Well, it's mostly just uh, nitpicks, but considering we already got how the writers weren't communicating properly, I don't think it's worth mentioning, really. It just felt that way. We're not hundred percent sure if it's true, but it just felt that way. Yeah, but like <laughs> the part where um, on the last on the last chapter where uh, Shangar explains where he got the uh, the bottle, he said he found them uh, in the catacombs beneath the Crystal Empire, but it's actually Crystal Caverns. Uh, give it a thing. I mean, uh, he's tired. <laughs> Uh, but so yeah, that, that that's the end of the annual. Um, yeah. I didn't like it. <laughs> Only like that one chapter with the Mora. That's mm-hmm. about it. All right. Oh, by the way, there's another annual coming, or w- that came, and that's the 2021 annual. Yeah, but this one started directly to season ten because apparently they didn't <laughs> have enough. I don't know. Didn't have, didn't have enough space to give uh, two more chapters to the official uh, comic line. Mm, well, that that one will be that one will have to wait because I have not catch up with season ten yet. So um, yeah, uh, let's wrap things up because um, I think I have a strong feeling. Uh, next week we're we're going to do season ten, and we might have a certain pigeon joining us. Pigeon? Yes, Pigeon. We gotta stop him. <laughs> <laughs> no, we should just let him in. <laughs> uh, boys. So, anywho, um, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmcgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Jacob, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on the DeviantArt page, Jacob on Twitter. You can find me on the Twitter, uh, Tales of the Ashes. Or if you like in fiction, you can find me under the username JFT. All right, all right. Awesome, awesome. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. Uh, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank you, Yarko, Lucky Knight, myself, Like, and also Tristan. Thank you so much. You guys are great. So, thank you. Anyway, you're welcome. Anyway, I have been Roman Sanzo. I've been Yaka. And we'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of MBS Show. See ya. Bye-bye.